Today, you'll improve your fluency in English by reading and listening to English at the same time. We're going to read a news article together. Welcome back to J4's English. I'm Jennifer. Now let's get started. First, I'll read the headline The Sphere, Las Vegas' multi billion dollar entertainment venue. Let's talk about the pronunciation here. Notice that this has a F sound. So this PH is pronounced as F. If I change this to F and I just leave the S for now, we have fear, fear. Repeat that, fear. Easy enough, right? So now I need to add the S, which can be a difficult sound combination. For your F, think about what your mouth is doing. Fear, fear. But for your S, Sphere, sphere. So you're going to hear the F more. The S is going to be quite quick. Sphere, sphere, sphere. Keep practicing that. The sphere. Las Vegas is. Now notice here, Vegas, Las Vegas. That's the name of the city, the famous city around the world, Las Vegas. Here, I'm making it possessive, but for pronunciation, I need to add an extra syllable. Las Vegas's, Vegas's, Las Vegas's multi billion dollar entertainment venue. And here is the spear, the spear. When I first saw this image, the first thing I said is, wow, wow, that's impressive. And then I also said, that's cool. That's cool. So cool. This is a very casual way that you can sound like a native speaker. You can use it as an adjective to describe something as interesting, impressive. That's cool. That's so cool. That's impressive. What about you? When you saw this, what's the first adjective that came to your mind? Put that in the comments. Wow. The sphere is. And you can use mine, impressive, cool, or a different adjective. Put that in the comments. Wow, the sphere is. And then say it out loud so you can practice that pronunciation as well. Now, don't worry about taking these notes because I summarize everything in a free lesson PDF. So you can look in the description for the link. Now, let's continue and talk about the sphere. The sphere is finally here. So these rhyme because we have fear here. The sphere is finally here. That's a good one to practice out loud for your pronunciation as well. You're going to get very comfortable with this by the end of the article. The sphere is finally here. And if you're wondering why this has a capital, the sphere, it's because that's the name of this entertainment venue. The name of this is the Spear, the spear. And that's why you have a capital S because we always capitalize proper nouns. And later, when you see it in the article, you'll notice that the article the is part of the name. So the name is the spear. The spear is finally here and it's already generated quite a buzz. When you first read this, you may have thought it is. It's is a contraction of it is, but grammatically that would be incorrect because it is generated. That doesn't make sense. Because of that, I know that this S is actually the auxiliary verb has. It has already generated quite a buzz and that's the present perfect verb tense. So you can't tell just by looking at this contraction. You can't tell if this is it is or it has. It's the full context of the sentence that will tell you. So this contraction represents it has and it's already generated quite a buzz. Let's talk about this. What's a buzz? In this context, a buzz is excited, positive talk about something. And in this case, the something is the sphere. 
So if I go to my friend and say, oh, wow, did you hear about the new sphere in Las Vegas? Yeah, it's super cool. I really want to go see it. Yeah, it looks amazing. And many people are talking about the sphere in a positive, excited way. That's a buzz, a buzz. And generally, it's something generates a buzz. So that movie generated a buzz. The event generated a buzz. And again, excited, positive talk. Before we move on, I'd love to tell you about Link, my personal favorite way to learn a language. Link is a language app that lets you learn from content you love. The reason why I use Link to learn languages and why I recommend you do too is because of the app's focus on input. On Link, you have access to thousands of hours of content that includes both audio and text, so you can both read and listen to English. Plus, you can import content directly from YouTube, Netflix, blogs, the news, and much more. For example, you know those news articles that I like to share in my videos? You can easily import them into Link and create your own interactive lessons. You'll be able to easily look up words and phrases, track your statistics, and level up your English ability. I first started using Link because the platform was co-founded by Steve Kaufman. He's a polyglot who speaks 20 languages. His method focuses on input, lots of reading and lots of listening. And that's why Link, the app Steve co-founded, is so effective. It makes reading and listening to content in my target language easier and more enjoyable. Link is available on both desktop and mobile, so you can practice your English anytime, anywhere. And Link is giving all J4S English viewers a 35% discount off a one-year premium plan if you upgrade using my coupon code. You'll also have access to my special Link shelf, which includes my favorite English articles and TV shows. I highly recommend Link because I know it will help you improve your English quickly and you'll have a lot of fun in the process. So use the link in the description to sign up now. Let's continue with our lesson. It started as a simple sketch. So what's the it here? The sphere. The sphere started as a simple sketch. A sketch is a quick drawing. So you can draw something very quickly and generally there aren't a lot of details. There's not a lot of precision. So I might say, make a sketch of your house and you'll just draw the outline of your house very quickly. Now notice because sketch is a noun, you need a verb. The verb is make a sketch, make a sketch. And this is in the imperative verb tense. But I can also simply use sketch as a verb, sketch your house. And in this case, this is a verb in the imperative form. So both are correct as a noun or as a verb. It started as a simple sketch. So someone drew a sphere. So a circle, that's a sphere, a circle, with a stick person inside. This on the right is a stick person. So a very simple drawing of a person. This is a stick person. We have a joke in English that she's such a terrible artist, she can't even draw a stick person which I would say would apply to me. Even my stick people aren't that good. <laughs> so this is a stick person and it was inside a circle which represented the sphere and that's how this came to life. Seven years later, that drawing has been made real. Notice the expression that I use. That's how it came to life, came to life, has been made real. Same thing, just a different way of saying it. Of course, you always need to match your grammar to the sentence structure of the sentence. So that drawing has come to life. Now is grammatically correct within the sentence. A $2.3 billion massive spherical venue. 
All right, so you already know how to pronounce sphere. Now you'll just add uckle, spherical. And then you have to add the syllable stress, spherical, erical. So you can always drop the beginning part and make it an easier sound. So let's just say erical, like ear, erical, erical. And then you can add on the F sound, f spherical. Now you can add on the s, spherical, spherical. So that's how you can take a complicated sound and make it a lot easier to pronounce and to practice as well. In this case, spherical is the adjective form and it simply describes the venue. I just realized I didn't explain what a sphere is. Perhaps you don't know. A sphere is just an object that's in the shape of a circle. And that's why this entertainment venue is called the sphere because it's in the shape of a circle. A $2.3 billion massive spherical venue standing 366 feet high and lighting up the Las Vegas skyline. So again, here's the object. As you can see, there's light coming from it. So it's lighting up the skyline. It's making the skyline lighter or brighter. It's lighting up the skyline. Let's continue. Inside the 516 foot wide sphere. So before we talked about the height, 366 feet high. So that's the height. And now we're talking about the width. So you describe it as wide. So the height is high and the width is wide. I wrote that here and notice I wrote X feet wide. But here it says 516 foot wide sphere. Why is that? That's because in this case, this entire area that I've highlighted is an adjective that describes the sphere. And adjectives don't have a singular or plural form. So feet is plural and foot is singular. Otherwise, if you were saying it as a measurement, you would say the sphere is 516 feet wide. So this is the measurement for it and you would use feet, but this is the adjective form and you use foot because adjectives don't have a plural form. Inside the 516 foot wide sphere, a high resolution LED screen. Notice we don't pronounce this as lead, lead. It's L-E-D, L-E-D screen, not lead. So you pronounce this as the individual letters. I'll just put a space between them so you remember to pronounce them as the individual letters and not as lead. To be honest, I'm not sure what L-E-D stands for. I know that FYI means for your information. So each letter represents something for your information, FYI. So I know that LED, each letter stands for something, but I don't know what that is. Do you know what LED stands for? If you do, feel free to share it in the comments because I have no idea. I've only heard it pronounced as LED. I've never heard anyone actually say what it is. A high resolution LED screen, the largest on earth, wraps halfway around the 17,600 seat audience. Okay, again, this is a great example of an adjective. It describes the audience because otherwise you would say the audience or the theater, we'll just change it to the theater. The theater has 17,600 seats and you would need to add an S to seat because there's more than one seat, right? But this is an adjective and that's why we don't have an S here. So there are 17,600 seats in the sphere. That is pretty cool. Very impressive. Out of the 17,600 seats, oh look, we have it right here. I didn't need to write it because we have an example right here. 
10,000 provide an immersive experience. Let's take a look at this out of these seats. This is a great sentence structure that you can use to ask someone a question. You could say, out of these three cities, which one do you want to visit the most? And then you can either say the cities or perhaps they're written below. So I want you to answer this. Out of these three cities, Las Vegas, San Francisco, or Miami, which one do you want to visit the most? Share that in the comments. I'm really excited to hear your answer. Now notice in this sentence structure, out of these specific seats, 10,000 provide an immersive experience. So they're saying 10,000 out of 17,600 seats. So they're limiting the number of seats that have this immersive experience. With a specialized sound system capable of making guests feel sound vibrations. Notice how they put feel in quotations because generally you hear sound, but they're talking about the vibration. So if you're sitting down in a movie theater and because of the bass, you you feel it, you feel the vibration. So that will happen in 10,000 out of 17,600 seats. The Sphere proudly boasts having the world's largest concert grade audio system. The verb to boast is used when you have or you own something and you're proud of it. So in this case, the Sphere proudly boasts having the world's largest audio system. So they have it and they're very proud that they have it. I put having in brackets because it's optional. You can boast something. Now, in this case, the something is just the audio system. The rest of the information gives more information about the audio system. But you could say this sphere boasts an audio system. So the sphere has an audio system and they're very proud of it. The sphere boasts an audio system. It delivers a crystal clear and multi-layered audio experience. If you describe audio as crystal clear, it means that it is the highest level of quality, crystal clear. So I hope you think that this audio is crystal clear. I certainly go to a lot of effort getting this professional microphone and making sure that the studio has very good audio. So if you are happy with the quality of the audio in this video, put crystal clear in the chat. Put crystal clear in the chat. If you don't put crystal clear, I might have to get a new microphone. So put crystal clear in the chat. Now you can use crystal clear in a more everyday setting as well. You could be having a phone call or a Zoom meeting or an online meeting and you might say, oh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? And the other person to let you know that yes, they can hear you and the audio quality is great. They can simply say crystal clear. Can you hear me? crystal clear so you know that the audio is okay. Let's continue. Not only is the interior of the building impressive, but its exterior also boasts 1.2 million hockey puck sized LEDs. So remember, boast, it has it and it's very proud of having it. So again, the same verb here. Hockey puck size, this is an adjective, it tells you the size of the LEDs. LEDs are a light. Remember, I'm not sure what LED means. So if you do, let me know. And a hockey puck is about this big. So that's the size of the LED. And it boasts 1.2 million. That can be programmed to create dynamic and colossal image displays. Colossal image displays are extremely large. That's what colossal means, extremely large. Let's continue. It drew immediate attention on the 4th of July with a digital fireworks display 
and an eyeball that appeared to scan the horizon with the words, hello world. So imagine you were walking down the street and all of a sudden a giant eyeball appeared on the spear. Again, you would probably say, wow, that's cool. That's super cool. Or that's impressive. Or again, have some other adjective choice of your own. So make sure you share that in the comments as well. Let's continue. On September 29th, the much anticipated moment arrived as the sphere unveiled its grandeur to the world for the first time. So it's grandeur. This represents the, the size, how large it is, how advanced it is. It's grandeur. Now let's talk about the verb to unveil. When you unveil something, you sh simply show it, but you show it for the very first time. So before this moment on September 29th, nobody had seen the inside of the sphere, but then they unveiled it. They showed it for the first time. They showed the grandeur of the sphere to the world, setting the stage for U2's 25 show residency. So U2 is the name of a very popular band, a band that's known around the world, I'm sure. And a 25 show residency means that U2 has committed to performing 25 shows. So U2 will perform 25 shows in the sphere. And notice again, this is an adjective. That's why we don't have an S on show because it's an adjective. But when I said my sentence, there was an S. Here's the sentence again with the S, the plural noun. You two will perform 25 shows at the sphere. That's its 25 show residency. Now, much anticipated. This is very common to say much anticipated. Another common word is highly anticipated. The highly anticipated moment, the much anticipated moment. And when you describe something as highly anticipated or much anticipated, it means that it's something that people have been expecting and they've been expecting it with a lot of strong emotion. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Only three more days. That would describe a highly anticipated moment or event. I wrote that definition for you. Now let's continue. This legendary rock band, of course, that's you too, the legendary rock band. This legendary rock band took center stage within the colossal, we already know what this means, very large, colossal state of the art. To describe something as state of the art means it uses the latest and the best of everything, materials, technology, everything that went into the construction of it is the latest and the best, state of the art. Within the colossal, state of the art, spherical structure and delivered a two hour performance. Again, we have a lot of adjectives in this case that otherwise could be a plural noun, but in this case is an adjective and that's why you don't see an S. The performance lasted for two hours. In that case, of course, there would be an S on the noun. So they delivered a two hour performance that left the audience in awe. That's the face of awe. When you see something and it's just so great, so interesting, so amazing that your mouth literally drops. That's in awe, in awe. Let's continue. Throughout the evening, attendees were treated to a mesmerizing array of stunning visuals. First, let's talk about an attendee. An attendee is just someone who attends. So attendees in the plural represents people who attend. So people who attended 
the two-hour performance by the legendary rock band U2. Throughout the evening, attendees were treated to a mesmerizing array of stunning visuals. Okay, an array of means a large number of. So an array of visuals. So there are many different visuals, an array of. And a mesmerizing array of. When something is mesmerizing, it means it has your full attention and you don't want to look away because what you're looking at or what you're listening to is so interesting that it has your full attention. So even if your phone was beeping, you wouldn't even notice or you wouldn't even care because what you're looking at is so much better. That would be mesmerizing. So they were treated to a mesmerizing array of stunning visuals. It was a star-studded affair. If you describe an event as star-studded, it means that many stars attended. And a star in this case represents a celebrity. So a star-studded affair is an affair, an event where many celebrities attended. It was a star-studded affair with numerous prominent entertainers and athletes in attendance, including Oprah Winfrey, LeBron James, and Matt Damon. And that's the end of our article. And I don't know about you, but it definitely convinced me to want to go to Las Vegas and see this sphere. I'd love to see it in person. So now what I'll do is I'll go to the beginning of the article and I'll read it from start to finish. And this time you can focus on my pronunciation. Let's do that now. The Sphere, Las Vegas' multi-billion dollar entertainment venue. The sphere is finally here, and it's already generated quite a buzz. It started as a simple sketch, a circle with a stick person inside. Seven years later, that drawing has been made real. A $2.3 billion massive spherical venue standing 366 feet high and lighting up the Las Vegas skyline. Inside the 516-foot-wide sphere, a high-resolution LED screen, the largest on Earth, wraps halfway around the 17,600-seat audience. Out of these 17,600 seats, 10,000 provide an immersive experience with a specialized sound system capable of making guests feel sound vibrations. This sphere proudly boasts having the world's largest concert-grade audio system. It delivers a crystal clear and multi-layered audio experience. Not only is the interior of the building impressive, but its exterior also boasts 1.2 million hockey puck-sized LEDs that can be programmed to create dynamic and colossal image displays. It drew immediate attention on the 4th of July with a digital fireworks display and an eyeball that appeared to scan the horizon with the words, Hello World! On September 29th, the much-anticipated moment arrived as the sphere unveiled its grandeur to the world for the first time, setting the stage for U2's 25-show residency. This legendary rock band took center stage within the colossal, state-of-the-art spherical structure and delivered a two-hour performance that left the audience in awe. Throughout the evening, attendees were treated to a mesmerizing array of stunning visuals. It was a star-studded affair, with numerous prominent entertainers and athletes in attendance, including Oprah Winfrey, LeBron James, and Matt Damon. If you enjoyed this lesson and you want me to make more lessons just like this, then put crystal clear in the comments. Put crystal clear in the comments. And remember, Link is giving you an amazing 35% discount off a one-year premium plan. I know you'll love using Link and it will really help you take your fluency to the next level. You can click here to sign up or you can look in the description for the link.